Hey all, and welcome to another day in the life. As always, Patsu is the first one to wake up. It alternates between ferrets, but really he's always awake when I get up, especially when he hears breakfast being made. Yay for unhealthy breakfast! I just started getting up this early again, so I haven't yet found the motivation to make something nice to eat, unfortunately. Can't forget to brush and wash the face. If I start my day by washing my face, I tend to feel more alert and just ready for the day. Now the fun part, making the kiddos food. Today they're having chopped chicken rib cage with some necks and homemade bone broth. Stay tuned for the recipe for the broth. The other day I showed you guys how I cut hens for the crew, so go check that out if you're interested. But this is the same hen and I'll be feeding some of the giblet bag as well. I generally feed anywhere between 9 9 30 a.m. to noon sometimes depending on how late I fed them the night before. My tool of choice are these gloves. I use them to avoid getting meat on my hands and also to avoid having to use so much soap because I'm kind of allergic to soap so there's that. <laughs> I use the scissors to cut into the rib cage and make nice bite-sized pieces. Some people feed whole parts of animals, but having so many ferrets, it becomes hard to determine who is eating what and in what amounts, so I find it easier to just cut into like one inch size pieces for them. I now feed all their meals in a glass Pyrex bowl. This helps cut down on the amount of any lingering bacteria after washing. Plastic bowls tend to get really gross and over time the material can actually leak into their food. Here I am drizzling some homemade turkey and chicken bone broth on their food. I feed one cup of it weekly and they really enjoy it. Bone broth has many benefits. In summary, it acts as a joint supplement, tummy soother, and immune system booster. I have the recipe on my blog so feel free to follow along, but first take your crock pot and fill it with raw bones. This time I didn't have too many to spare for broth, so ideally you'd have the pot full of them. Beef and lamb, very thick bones work the best. I used chicken feet and turkey wing for this. Fill the pot with water, make sure it covers the bones, and then add the apple cider vinegar. This is key to allow the broth to actually pull the minerals from the bones, creating a gelatin-like consistency at the end. I use four tablespoons here. So then you set on high for one hour and then back to low for at least 24 hours. After that period, remove the bones and let the pot cool. Then place in the fridge for a few hours. Discard the cooked bones. These are unsafe for pet consumption. have a hard layer of fat on top of the broth, remove it and you should be left with a jelly-like broth. The spatch was more of a thick liquid, I didn't have as many bones for it, so if yours comes out this way too, it's still 100% edible for them. I store in 8 ounce containers and freeze, I take one out to thaw and use it for 5-ish days every week.
Today I had a walking client I do a few times a week. I also offer positive reinforcement training on my walks with them. Other days I may be out horseback riding, taking the ferrets for a walk, or just anything outside. It's hard to remember to get out, especially the way my apartment is located. I've been riding since I was seven years old, so I'm super thankful for any opportunity that I get to do it again. For at least an hour a day, I do what I call study sessions, where I write in my notebook and learn from published studies, journals, books, webinars, to continue my education in pet care. Some days I've spent six hours at a time expanding on what I know with ferrets. A lot of work goes into my blog and my channel, and I have to make sure that I'm staying up to date because pet care is ever evolving. Something that we may have thought was good a year, few years ago may not be good today. So it's important to keep up to date with pet care for all species. And of course, Howell was getting bored and decided to climb up on my desk and interrupt me during my study session today. I've showed you guys how much Howl loves his little toy here, but I've never actually caught him playing with it. So on this day, he was actually playing with it and being super cute. Time for lunch. I'm enjoying some lemon garlic quinoa and continuing my studying. I also take breaks to answer student emails from the program and create more content or revise current content from the program. I like to do at least one project a day to help stay motivated, especially during quarantine, whether that may be a new video, blog post, or creating something food related. Today I'm making pickled carrots. I love pickling and it's so healthy and super easy to do. I'll link the recipe below, but it's fairly simple. I used baby carrots and filled a jar with a mixture of apple cider vinegar. Yes, I use this stuff in practically everything in my home. Uh, water, salt, peppers, dill, and some pickling spice. I tried some since making them and they're super duper yummy. Hope you enjoy the ruckus being caused in the background of these clips.
second project of the day, paw print art. There are many pet safe paints on the market, but I don't really feel safe using things with artificial colorings, preservatives, and whatnot, especially since ferrets are so prone to licking their paws. That's how they clean their face. So I'm making a simple pigment out of just dirt. Yep, you heard me correctly. Make a mud and paint with it. Mud is safe on paws and wipes off easily. Sure, it doesn't stick to the canvas super well without a medium, but this is all just for fun. I'm starting with Appa and he did fairly well. Next we have Tanji and he was also fairly well behaved for this. Then we have Howl. And then Momo and Howl of course dunking his face in the mud in the background almost spilling it. I did Pasu off screen and I'm sure you can probably guess what happened. Hint, he knocked the mud everywhere. <laughs> And here is their finished masterpiece. It doesn't look amazing, but it's special to me knowing that all the ferrets made it. Again, it's just mud, so you can wipe it off and start over or just let it sit and don't touch it. I think it's quite abstract. What figures do you see in this painting? Say hi. Hi. What are we doing? Walking. Dinner time! The ferrets will be having pork loin, a couple chicken hearts from the hen that we were cutting earlier, and some beef green tripe. I have an entire blog post on tripe if you're interested in learning more. This is considered a muscle meat meal and the morning meal was bone-in. All done! Thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to our members, and we will see you in our next video. Bye!